Valentine's Day special for Moving On TV. I've got uh -huh. a very special person with us here who do you wear your heart on your sleeve, Edwina Nap? My heart or my sleeve? Mm. Uh, that, that's the sleeve, yes. <laughs> and okay, that's the heart. Uh, There's your heart I, on I, your sleeve. I, 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 I get the hint now. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're a very compassionate person, a very compassionate mm -hmm. human being. Cut, I dropped the rose. Okay. You're a very compassionate human being and from I've known you for quite a while. And you're a very good friend and you're very supportive of moving on TV. And um, to me, a person like yourself, they, the expression is, I wear my I'm heart flattered. on my sleeve. I'm flattered. But yeah. <laughs> so someone who's not afraid to give a lot of compassion mm -hmm. and to say how they feel, is that's the metaphor. <clears throat> so what would you say that, am I right? Do you think I'm right? Would you say that you do, you're able to, to express your feelings and be compassionate to others, which is a big gift. Uh, yes, I've no, no, I've, I never had problems with actually expressing feelings or whatever they may be at the time. Um, <clears throat> and um, yeah, the, especially when I had my heart operation last uh, Christmas, um, that, that put me in a frame of mind thinking about preparing for death, you see. So, and uh, I have to apply my probability theory <laughs> about uh, how likely I'm going to die and so on, you know. So, um, and I thought I haven't got enough years uh, to actually <coughs> make everything work, probably. Mm. So, do you, sorry, do you feel that that changed you? then the, the thought of that you could die because of what's happening with your heart do you yes. feel that made I, you more I, I don't that think made about you more dying open? as such you know yeah running uh, out of time I, yes I, I just think uh, I have a journey that is likely to be this long and I would like to accomplish certain things on this journey mm. Mm. so um, and it came very much in touch with my feelings. Okay. <coughs> that was very good of, the, of, of that. Uh, in fact, it does me a, did me a lot of good having a, an emergency. <laughs> <whatever>. <laughs> well, this is what happens. A lot of human beings, we, we tend to have to wait for that moment yeah. before we can actually open our hearts and tell people mm -hmm. how much we care about them or, or do something nice. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we have to be at that level of crisis. Mm -hmm. And so that you feel that that's what basically enhanced your life in some way. Mm, yes, I had a very mm. um, <coughs> clear path uh, straight after the operation. And then as time wore on, things became more and more complicated. Now I'm so sort of starting to, uh, things become so complicated that I'm starting to lose my way again. So I need oh. to sort of mm. go back <laughs> think, to that moment yeah. in time and uh, uh, make myself feel again. Yeah. Mm. Well, they say the heart is the center of mm. love, don't they? Mm -hmm. And and when you go through something like, what was, was it open heart surgery you went through or something? What was it? Oh, yes, they, they, they have this very high tech thing. So in a way, they, your they heart opened. <laughs> yeah, well, well, <laughs> Metaphorically, <laughs> symbolically. Oh, well, physically. Physically. They, they, <laughs> uh, the heart, uh, the heart operation. They, they put me in suspended animation with uh, by sort of a cold storage. Oh, okay. Hmm. That, that is how they do it nowadays. Okay. Uh, I think it's something to do with the fact that they discovered that uh, a skier uh, being frozen in the mountains can bring them down and, they are not, and, and you can sort of... Uh, uh, they, they, they sort of survive in the suspended animation. That's fascinating. Them. And mm. uh, what, obviously in another program I'm going to interview you about lots mm. of different things, but today, I mean, uh, I'm really happy, well, you know, talking about hearts and talking about roses mm. and valentines and red mm. 
And you can hear my heart. I can hear. <laughs> if you turn down the volume. Where is it? <laughs> <laughs> Over there. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, that, that's the the left. Yeah, <laughs> sorry, the left side of the body, the heart. Yeah. Um, I put it on your right side. Your heart's over there. Yeah. But anyway, yeah. um, in fact, yesterday I, I, I read an a scientific article about this man who has got a mechanical heart working alongside with his own heart. All oh, right. Yeah. So he's got two hearts. Yep. So it should be even more loving because it's yeah. the symbolism of hearts, uh, as I say, is about love, mm -hmm. unconditional love and giving. Um, but we're talking today, we're talking about Valentine's Day. Yes, and I invited the, 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 my, you. My conception of Valentine is, yeah. is sort of. A, what is your conception of Valentine's um, Day? Rather different from most people because I've, firstly, I've never had a Valentine given to me. Oh, oh, did you hear that? <laughs> You've got to all send lots of Valentine's cards to Edwina now. I've put lots of messages on Facebook. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> Go on. All right. And uh, then, uh, <coughs> where's I? Oh, yes, that's right. Uh, so, <coughs> when it's Valentine's Day, uh, I don't think about what should I be doing in a Valentine stayed uh, and I have to get myself up to a disco and things like that. Oh no, I just thought I'll make use of this day or this day where everybody else is uh, wasting their time dancing around a disco. <laughs> 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 and what is it? What do you do then? Uh, uh, here, What's special is, to you? Yes, uh, tonight is quite good. Quite good. I was sitting on this, this uh, movie on television and doing an interview uh, that I've never done before. Something exciting and new, mm. right? So mm -hmm. we we talked also we talked about um, love, you know, romantic love, and and how I I did ask you because I was interested mm -hmm. in knowing. You see that, you did, you, you, what I don't find that this commercial <laughs> stuff that mm. uh, this is Valentine's Day, every everybody has got a loving heart. You see, oh no, <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> not enough. <laughs> But you I said, mean, you said love sorry. comes uh, at an unpredictable time. You can't say on the 14th of February you're going to fall in love. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so basically, what you're saying is yeah. what we talked about before was just get on with it any day. Just tell your friends you care about them and love them. Make it a, a more, you know, it doesn't have to be just the 14th of February mm. where you actually get the courage to say something. But you mm -hmm. did say you fell in love, you did fall in love when, uh, with someone when you were younger? Yes, I would say uh, I was in fact with her for a little while. Uh, How old were uh, you, if you don't mind me asking? That was uh, when I was 23 years old. Oh, okay. I, I just graduated from university and started uh, a full-time job as a computer programmer. And um, we, three of us from the same department, decided to buy a house. Uh, four of us, the inter department, mm -hmm. decided to buy a house and we all played Go, you see. Uh, and then we had a party. Ah. And, and uh, <laughs> one of the girls uh, from uh, my housemate, Roger, uh, church came, came along. For some reason, she was very interested in me. And after the party, she decided to, to phone me up and uh, go out uh, uh, for an outing. And we went to Spencer's Gallery in Cockham. Mm. Well, that was my first sort of taste of romance. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that was it? You never wanted to do it again, <laughs> is that it? Uh, <laughs> you decided no, it, no, it, no, it was No, 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 that was very interesting. <laughs> 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 Great. Mm. Yeah, uh, <laughs> but no, as we said, um, it's really good to hear and to listen to, you know, stories yeah. like this. But again, do you, when you think about Valentine's Day over the years, I mean, you, you, were, you weren't born here, you, were born, you come from Hong Kong, don't you? Yes, I was born in Hong Kong until uh, 15 years of age, I was studying there. And did you have anything like this in Hong Kong, the 14th of February? Oh was yes, there a, yes, yes. Really? Indeed, yes. Uh, in fact, <coughs> I actually spent a, a Valentine's Day uh, up in the mountains, 
Oh, me pingu sai. <coughs> oh my god. The boy, the boy, uh, boy scouts and the girl guy. Oh, and, I uh, see. This was only one month before my uh, my parents sent me over to to England. <laughs> Okay, so you actually celebrate Valentine's Day in Hong Kong as the same way as the Western world, or does it have a different implication? Because we talked about um, Finland, where Valentine's Day is actually Friends Day, mm -hmm. where you send a, a blessing or a love note to a friend, and in different countries, you know, different ways of thinking about it. Mm -hmm. So in Hong Kong, well, Hong Kong is, is it British the same? Colony, so yeah, they have the same meaning over there. So it's As still a romantic connotation of uh, yeah, proposals yeah. and flowers mm -hmm. and chocolates and roses. Yeah, but it wasn't a big, big thing at the time. We weren't that romantic back in, back in the days in nineteen seventies. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's really interesting to hear because, say, for here on Moving on TV, we want to hear all the different global and cultural differences, and we want to bring them here. So is there anything at all that you feel that you may be doing this year that you haven't done yet? My courage <laughs> required by me isn't, isn't a proposal. The courage is actually finding someone and think, I'm going to come in. <laughs> mm. And that is the scary bit. You can get it wrong, you see. <laughs> well, it's taking a risk. But are you looking for a relationship? Uh, I'm not confident yet. Right. Okay. Well, who knows? Maybe we can find you someone. Yeah. <laughs> what are you looking for then? What do you look for in a relationship? I think uh, uh, very much uh, someone who is a kind of teammate with me. Uh, I, I'm very creative and practical, you see, and, and I'm really looking for a kind of inventor partner. Someone. Uh, <coughs> Yeah, someone who can inspire, inspire me to to think creatively, and and being a taskmaster to to keep keep me prodding on. Well, that's very brave mm. because um, opposites do attract, and I think you do need that mm. balance of uh, people that are very different. <laughs> mm. The partners are very different in order to bring that balance up. So you're asking for someone because you're very scientifically minded, you're very mm -hmm. grounded. Mm -hmm. So you're looking for someone to actually develop that creative side of, of your mind. Is that what you're saying? Uh, <coughs> it's, it's more to... Um, well, I haven't decided <laughs> <laughs> for, for one thing. <laughs> well, we wish you well. Yeah, yeah. And, and who knows? Hopefully, you know, once this goes out, we might find... A mate for Edwina, <laughs> which would be really nice. Oh, thank you. Be, uh, well, who knows what moving on TV is going to make happen, or you know what we'll, we'll create. Mm -hmm. But it's been lovely speaking to you, and um, I, I wish you well. As mm -hmm. It's really, really important, and I hope that everything's okay now, and that mm -hmm. we have you for at least another 40, 40 50 years. <laughs> If you want to be around for that long. That would be very optimistic. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of Valentines. Okay, it's lovely. Take care, Edwina. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank you. Hi, Queenie. Hello, Lauren. <laughs> good evening. Hey, good evening. Well, we're here on Moving On TV today, and uh, it's a Valentine's special, a romance, love, unconditional love. And uh, we're very, very lucky to have Queenie, Jacob's grandmother. <laughs> Lovely lady. Yes. Is that your real name, Queenie? I was christened Queenie, yes. Mm -hmm. Everybody asks me, is it a nickname? And it was my granny's nickname, but I was christened Queenie. Mm. Although it gets confusing because I was christened Elsie Queenie. So if I go into hospital and they call out Elsie, Elsie Queenie, I, I take no notice for a minute and I suddenly, oh, that's me, because <laughs> they called me by my second name, which is Queenie. Yeah, 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 it's the name they, that you got used to. Mm. So today we're talking about Valentine's, but in all sorts of different ways. We want, I want to know what it means to lots of different people because we're all unique and we're all different. And one of the things that we love doing is we love falling in love. Oh, yeah. We love falling in love. It just gives us something to live for. Something special. It gives us that oomph, you know, between you and me when I was single. 
I went on holiday somewhere and there was a good looking guy, it kind of gave me that courage to go down, want to go to dinner and, you know, look at them all the time yeah, and, and you know, good, yes. look good and look nice and get dressed up and everything. It's just the way we are. It's our nature. So, well, what was the first time you fell in love? Uh, well, I was uh, 12 and I started going out with a boy who looked like John Travolta. <laughs> Absolutely head over heels in love with him, and uh, it was my fault I lost him because Aww. I played him about, went out with other guys, when you then were went 12, back to sorry. him. <laughs> well, 12 to about 14. Yes. Yes. And um, in the end, um, another girl latched onto him and managed to keep him. Aww. But it was my fault because I messed him about. <laughs> did you? Did you? And uh, did that hurt? Really yes, because being my first love, mm. it was a very strong love, and I could recognise him in a bus queue mm. or anywhere from behind mm. with his back to me. Very strong. Strong memory. I remember going to a youth club camp and uh, messing him about again. I was, and <laughs> I was still at school, and um, I thought, oh, he broke his leg, and I thought, oh great you know Peter's not coming so um, I was flirting with his brother and then he turned up Peter with a broken leg on his bike and uh, in the end uh, there was a bit of a tussle between oh them God. I'm afraid <laughs> you're very naughty <laughs> oh, yes. so but what what was that Val did Valentine's Day exist in those days oh yes yes yeah and I can't remember the Valentines I got, apart from one which stands out, which came from my husband when we were courting. I used to wear a red roller neck jumper and he sent me a Valentine's card and when I opened it, the boo, it, this is a woman in a red jumper and the boo's popped out at you. Oh, no. I still got it, I think. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is funny. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that was the first Valentine's card you got first from special. Your, it was going to be yes, your husband? Yes, yeah. Right, and and how long was it before you got married then? Um, After that, when I um, the 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 grandfather of Jacob, I married when I was twenty six, and uh, we had thirty three years together, I believe, and he then he died of cancer. Mm. But uh, it was good. It was we, we loved each other very much, but we were very different. Mm. Very different. He was quiet, very, very brainy. We called brainy man, and uh, I was just the opposite, <laughs> yeah. noisy and practical. <laughs> but isn't that thing about opposites yeah. attract? And yeah. we seem to need something we That's see in a bit that different person. To us. Yes. Yeah, yes. it really helps yes. the relationship along a bit. Yes. He was mm. always, always supportive, not in a loud or aggressive way, but always supportive. I did thirty years with the Scouts. He wouldn't come in because he he didn't want to work with children. But if we went camping or anything, he was all, always supported me. Always there for yeah. you. Yeah, that's lovely. That's yeah. really really important. So again, I mean, the fourteenth of February again is coming along, and um, I like to think of of that being a world global day to really care Show about you people and to tell people how how you feel about them. How do you feel about that? Um, well, it is a special day, especially for young people, I think, um, because they can, even if it's in a letter, they've not got to speak to somebody, uh, they can let them know by correspondence mm. how they feel about them and that they're special. Mm. And it doesn't matter how young you are, um, it's easy to do. You haven't yeah. got to go up and say anything, whereas, of course, when you mature, you should be more capable of saying I love you, you and feel? showing it in a so yeah. but going back to the days when you first met what was your your husband's name Martin Martin mm. that's a good name <laughs> <laughs> a lovely name yeah, yeah. so when you met Martin when you're going back to those days um, of course you didn't have text you didn't have Facebook no, no. so how would you approach you know when you want to approach someone that you really like what what would you do did you write letters well I'm afraid or? I'm I'm a very awkward person and very independent. If I actually like somebody, I would do the opposite of getting them to like me, which right. sounds weird, 
but um, because I was so independent, I didn't. I I I would not put myself forward. Right. If you see what yeah. I mean. Um, not that I couldn't, but I wouldn't. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, he chased me. Mm -hmm. I dumped him a couple of times, <laughs> but. There was no gain saying he he was going to have me, <laughs> and uh, that's the sort of devotional love. Mm. Uh, so even if I tried to put him off, he there was he wasn't having it. Right. And and that won me. So what years are we talking about? When did you meet? Uh, I met him when I was twenty. Well, we were in the youth club together, you see. Yeah. Uh, so um, I went out with him for about three years before we married. And uh, so we took it around the war. It was it the no, war? no, um, no. I was born at the end of the Second World War. You're I was born, born in '42, so um, this would be rock and roll time, right? Because I was very good at rock and roll. Oh, <laughs> I right, loved, yeah. I loved rock and roll. Like I had a huge red skirt, which was a full circle, and when I danced, it went right out. And one day it disappeared, and I said to my mother, where's my red skirt, Mum? I got rid of it, she said. I'm fed up with seeing your knickers. <laughs> <laughs> so what, what was your favourite present that Martin well, gave you for, um, say, for a special occasion? like? Oh, yes, Valentine's. he was good. He didn't say anything, um, but always came up with the goods. <laughs> um, oh... I don't know. I can't, I can't remember presents, but always plenty of flowers and chocolates. Right. Uh, so that tradition yeah. of flowers and chocolates, uh, yes. that's been around in the in the in the UK for quite a while, hasn't yes, it? Yes. Yeah. Well, of course we're mm. ladies, mm. and we like flowers and chocolates, don't we? I know I yeah. do. I've, I don't know any lady who would say she didn't like them. So I think the only thing that that probably we've inherited from America and stuff like that is probably the naughty underwear story. Oh, right. Bits and pieces. Yes. Yeah. Because that wouldn't be very British, would it? I think it is now, but I don't <laughs> think it was in my day. No, no, thanks. <laughs> no, no. Basically, you're saying that it's been around for a while and the traditions mm. yeah. keep going and they haven't really changed. I know, I've got two sisters <laughs> and when my eldest sister was in her mm. teens, the chaps were still going away for the two-year... Um, in the army or mm. RAF or whatever and um, she used to write to several because again she was in the, we belonged to a church you see with the youth club and we all went through it My, I've got three sisters and two sisters and three brothers and uh, uh, and she used to write to a lot of them till it all finished not long after that mm. and um, married again one of the youth club members mm. <laughs> so a lot of romance so, yeah, going yes, on there. Yes, <laughs> lots of people in the youth club married, you know, each other. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And we ha we did have reunions up till about ten, fifteen years ago, I suppose. You know, we'd all get together in some one or other houses. Yes, uh, to belong to a youth club, uh, it, it was special, really, special mm. time. Mm. So, do you have any? Funny memories. Uh, obviously, you must have a lot of fun memories from w with you and Martin together. Um, what would be well, something that stands um, out that you? I don't know particularly about fun memories because he was not a funny person. Uh, tender memories. Yeah. Everybody's yeah. got that, especially if you've been together for a long time. Like you know, I've been married now, twenty-one years. I bet you could tell some memories. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. And we did speak about a little bit about how we got together on the stage and stuff like that. But mm. I think that's what keeps you together, doesn't it? And you all also, what what else do you feel kept you together? Because we felt that you have to have things in common. You have to, in in some way. We, we didn't have children, but we you have didn't to have, have a lot of things in common apart from our life principles. We felt the same about how to bring up the children. Now, I don't know where this came from. Now, my mother and father, um, very working class, no money, so that we weren't able to go to university. My, old, my older sisters are clever, quite clever. One of them, very clever. But they couldn't go on because there was no money. Yet, 
that my husband and I wanted our children to go to university. Mm. So you wonder where that comes from because your mother and father weren't into that. So how did you have that sort of mind where you wanted, I suppose it's just wanting the best of your children. Yeah. Um, so we those sort of principles and the code of behaviour, they were the same. Mm. But we didn't have a lot of interest in common. When I first married him, he used to go down the shed till two or three in the morning. And I used to think, oh, what's wrong, with, you? What's wrong with me? Am I doing something wrong? <laughs> uh, but that's the way he was. Yeah. He is my, he's, he never stopped. He was always fiddling or working things out or making things and I had to accept that I had to accept am I going to moan at him and nag him and change him into Mm. something I won't want or Mm. am I go what I had to do I got into scouting right and my life was fulfilled Mm. in scouting and church yeah Uh, so that left him to do what he wanted to do because Mm. you can't change someone unless you make do something wrong exactly. I don't feel you hit the nail yeah. on the head you've got to get a life and do the best with your own life yeah and and, and work together as a well. relationship yeah. is supposed yes. to complement that mm-hmm. you can't change anyone but the more you change they're more likely to change mm-hmm. but that's beautiful mm-hmm. so thank you so much for that Queenie thank you it's going to be beautiful we're going to uh, nice, to nice bring out the you. my life laid bare <laughs> 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 thank you very much